So guys, great news, finally Dirac Live Base Control upgrade is available for Denon and Marantz. And I was expecting this for begin of 2024, but is already here and I'm really happy and excited about it. If you saw my video, first video hit almost 20k views where uh, I'm speaking about Dirac Live and uh, the comparisons uh, between Dirac Live and the standard Odyssey available for Denon and Marenz. I received a lot of comments about you guys told me that yes, but you are comparing uh, something free with Dirac Live that uh, is it has a retail price that is at the moment for the room corrections limited with limited bandwidth is uh, 259 bucks and i told yes i am comparing a standard release with something that you can purchase and i received a lot of comments saying that is not a fair comparison but was not a comparison about two things that have the same price was a comparison between something that you can have for free and something that you can purchase for having something extra. And there are many reasons about why I choose Dirac Live instead Odyssey Multi EQ XT32. And the first reason is because I had already a Yumic One Mini DSP microphone, so I do not need to purchase any other microphone. I always use this microphone since here, since I always play with Rumeco Wizard and this stuff. Second reason, I compared the two interfaces without yet tested at the times of course i compared the interface of dirac with odyssey and i really saw how much easy was to use dirac live and was everything performed and done and automatic not that odyssey is not but i saw that odyssey was a little bit more uh, let's say probably not complicated but with many options and stuff where dirac was more immediate and third reasons is of course because Dirac Live is well known over the world for to be a really reliable software for digital signal processing not famous only in the home audio but also in many other sectors like for example automotive so these were the three main reasons that let me choose Dirac Live uh, instead other software by the way check my video almost hit 20k views and in this video i'm telling you guys how to upgrade to dirac live and to do your first setup and also i'm giving to you a first impressions about the sound quality that was just compared to a standard odyssey software just amazing in terms of imaging and localization that is another planet and again i'm here to telling you that i didn't compare it with uh, odyssey multi aq and uh, i'm sure is a great software but these are the main reasons why i went with dirac live so back on base control is now available for Denon and Marenz and we can see that is available for the Denon AVR X3800, the AVR 4800 and of course the flagship AVC 1H. For Marenz is available for the Cinema 50, the Cinema 40 that I have and the AV10. And now finally we have also base control available for one sub or multi subwoofer so 349 bucks for the first one and 499 for the multi subwoofer one when you have more than one subwoofer it's hard to get a full bass rich bass sounds because they are interfering between each other they are interfering with the rooms and also with the main speakers and not only it could be that you have good bass in your listening positions but moving on the left or on the right in a secondary positions you will have less bass so it's not only about to have a tighter uh, more extended and smoother bass but also about having less variation so taking each subwoofer one by one it could be that they are working really good but when you put all together especially with the main speaker all these interactions is causing is causing interference direct live bass control that is also now managing the crossover points between subwoofer and main speaker because if you saw my first video these crossover points 
we had to set it in manual from the setup of Denon or Marantz. And what is changed now with Dirac Live Base Control that it should be, as far as I understood, everything in automatic. And I'm not finished, I will let also in the descriptions the full instructions regarding Dirac Live Base Control that you can read if you have time, of course. And uh, before two proceeds, I really suggest if you have already Dirac Live on your computer to do the upgrade of the software because I was still stuck to the old release. Unfortunately, uh, Dirac Live software was not saying to me that I, I have that there is a software upgrade, so I had to do it manually. So what you have to do is going inside your account of Dirac Live, just go on download and check for the last software for uh, Windows or iOS. So guys, let's do it. Let's go to upgrade the my Maren Cinema 40. Let's see if the firmware is already there. I come back on the PC to see how to do the Dirac Live based control if I, I think I don't have to do any microphone calibrations anymore because I did it already, I hope. Let's go to check it. All right, let's turn on my Marantz Cinema 40. Here we go, let's turn on the TV. Okay, here we go, we are inside the setup menu. So as I told you before, if we go on speaker, then manual setup, crossover. Here we had the possibility to set up all the crossover points for front, center, surround, top front and top rear. And I usually set these around 60, 80 Hz. Only the top front we are not able to reach 60, 80, so I set it around 100 Hz. And was everything doing in manual? If you click on enter, you have the possibility to set it from 250 Hz below to 40 Hz. So let's go back on firmware upgrade. Let's see if the firmware upgrade is ready. If we have to go under, no, not here, under general. Then down till firmware on. Check for update, update firmware of the AVR can only be set when the network connections is active. All right. So guys, I'm back. I don't know why I always have network problem on my Marantz Cinema 40. If you have the same things, please let me know in the description. So I had to do a reset of the network. You can do it in the general, if you go on general settings, then you go, if you scroll down, to reset and then here we can you can do the network settings reset and it should work let's go back on firmware upgrade let's scroll down still firmware now i can check for update before it was disabled because i didn't have any network okay let's check the upgrade here we go direct base live control upgrade estimated time to install 15 minutes let's do it Guys, the upgrade is complete. Let's take a quick look of the release, firmware release, firmware. Here we go. Here you should have this last firmware. Let's go back on setups, speakers, just to take a quick look of my configuration, manual setup, speaker layout, just a quick look of my layout, if it's everything fine as you see here i have a 9.1 configuration so that's wrong because i have two subwoofer so let's take a look 9.2 okay subwoofer mode standard directional all right okay we have the possibility to have the directionals now now it's not clear to me because with Dirac Base Control, as far as I understood, it sh you should have a directions left and right and no more uh, mono configurations. Let's let, let it like that for the moment. So everything looks fine, let's go back on Dirac Live software. So firmware upgrade is now complete and really strange now the wired network is working again and because during the upgrade I had to switch to the wireless one and I don't know, I have this problem since 
last few more upgrades so i hope with this last one i will not have any more this problem where i had to do every time the reset network reset that is really annoying okay guys upgrade is complete let's open the dirac live software okay dirac live app okay you should find your denon or marens immediately here we go of course we have to be connected to the same connections wireless or wired connections let's select Maren cinema 40 it should open your last calibrations not it didn't open the last calibrations okay would like to not connect any umic one i hope it will take my last project the last calibrations that i did so let's try load project and here we go per license which one was this one per license d12 and i call the calibrations like that let's try to open it okay now is updating the filter calculations it will take a little bit of time a couple of minutes but it should do it all right did it so i load the project let's take a look of the measures that i did here are all the measures that I did. I'm using uh, narrow uh, positions because of course you can decide how, how large is uh, your calibrations area. I use a small one. Here we have all the calibrations, front, left, center, front, right, surround, right, left, right, subwoofer one and subwoofer two. Of course, the best way it will be to do it again, once again, but now let's do a quick uh, test in this way. So if you go on filter designs, we have our field designs for front speaker, right speaker, send speaker, surround, subwoofer. And uh, we discussed this already about this out curve that is uh, pushing a little bit the bottom end and is giving a beautiful uh, roll off to the top end to give you also a more more pleasant sound and i generally let like that everything like that i don't uh, modify nothing i just take a look how it is yeah all are all done all in the same way and now finally we have under direct live because now we are on a direct live uh, calibrations we have now base management and base control and before we didn't had these two let's try to click on base management it's the first time that i try so i'm it's something new also for me so it's doing a first initializing of base control here we go so we have the possibility to of course uh, change the crossover point so something nice is that you don't need to do uh, against the calibrations with your microphone in all positions if you don't want so as you see i just load the project and i'm working on it okay front left and as we can see he set a crossover around 70 hertz before i generally set by myself this crossover point on on 60 interesting okay center also on 70 hertz okay both surround right and surround the left on 70 i don't know why i cannot select one by one okay this i have to check it so i think yeah he did uh, such uh, a group for the surround a group for the top front right so they are together at the moment okay top front i generally set it at 100 hertz if you remember he said it at 96 i was really closer because of course i checked the frequency response of the top height speaker and they don't really cannot play so so low so that's why i set it to 100 hertz when i did it by myself and he set it at 96 hertz great what about the top rear right and left both it's oh that's that's interesting okay the top rear that is more closer to my wall these are able to to go a little bit lower because i think the positions closer to to the wall is giving an emphasization on the base so they are able to reach 70 hertz i generally set all of them at 100 to let it at the same crossover but direct let the top front at 96 and set the top rear at 70. all right nice of course you, you can change it if you want if you click on the crossover point as you see i can move the crossover and by letting he will do an, again an initializations and change again your your dsp but for now let's let everything standard at 70 as dirac live did and this was 
base management but we have also here on the right as you can see base control now it's not really clear to me what is the difference but let's go to check in the instructions so if i go in the setup Dirac Live setup here is telling to you all you have to do. So start Dirac Live, login, select the Dirac Enable audio unit, select the microphone. These things that we saw already in the first video, so check the video, the first video will be in the description. Then if we scroll down to Enable Base Control, we can read that when Dirac Live is selected, the regular Dirac Live Designs page is pre sent it and start Dirac Live filter are calculated and this is what we saw in the first video. Then we have by selecting base management or base control you will enter the filter designs page for this base management. Regular base management filter with Dirac Live filter are designed and each subwoofer gain is scaled by one to match the target curve. But selecting base control, the filter designs will harmonize the subwoofer and non-subwoofer speaker in the lower frequencies using tailor matte phase filter delay and gain. So it looks like base control is adding something extra to the calibrations. All right, okay, fine. I can see that under base control also the crossover points are, are there and we can click on calculate. Now it's calculating the base control filter, group one, front, left, right, so is optimizing all of each groups. So as you saw, we could go directly after base management to create the filters and upload it on our receiver. Or we can go on base control, as far as I understood here, of course, we can go with base control and do these things extra. We have to check this with Dirac and we will do it. All right, so we are now under base control and we can see down on the right that we can proceed to the filter export. So proceed. So we have three custom presets. We can select one of these. So what I would like to do is, for example, let this last base control in positions two and the old release uh, the old direct live on positions one so i can switch quickly between them and check also doing comparison sound test so let's call this for example base control export filter on slot two so now it's preparing to the export Okay, I hear the Cinema 40 is doing a restart and let's go to check the setups on the Cinema 40. Let's go on setup, speakers, manual setup, speakers layout, because I want to check if now the subwoofer and I was right. As you can see, you cannot anymore select subwoofer in mono because everything now is managed by the Dirac Live base control. So nice, I was right. Okay, good. Quick look of distance, for example. Everything is managed by Dirac, so it's disables, levels, also everything disables, crossover sections, and here we go. Also crossover, as you can see, is disabled. You cannot do nothing because everything is managed by Dirac Live base control okay great speaker presets one two okay this is what the speaker presets regarding dirac or odyssey now i have dirac so i don't touch nothing here and advance okay everything disables also in the low frequency so you don't have any more the possibility to play with lfe and subwoofer crossover positions everything managed by base control great Let's go quickly on audio and scroll down to Dirac Live. And here we go, we have the filter that we name it base control, remember? I don't know why there is any more the first filter regarding Dirac Live. Probably I will have to upload it again for my test. So nice, everything ready for the sound test. So guys, I perform a quick test comparisons with some Blu-rays that I have here. It's really something quick to give you my first impressions about it. As we saw, you can't anymore play with crossover as soon you enable Dirac Live or, uh, sorry, Dirac Bass Control or 
Base management. So what I did was creating three presets, one with only Dirac Live, one with Dirac management and one with base control, jumping between the three to check the difference in this first impression. First test I performed it with Oppenheimer and you know the intro scenes there is a good amount of base information in first explosions. And what I found was that with base control enable the sub base was less aggressive where with direct live i always had this feeling that was too much aggressive and bloated and the feeling that moving in other couch positions i always had a good base information to be honest i didn't know how it was before because i always sit in my listening position but was fine in all three main positions of my couch and for some reasons i never liked this first scene in Oppenheimer. was sounds ugly not not right to me so nice to see that with base control was more smoothed control and extended next test was done with Hans zimmer live in prague this uh, is a beautiful concert that i really love it really recommend it dolby atmos really beautiful record and here's something interesting I discovered because was enabled the standard Dirac Live. I always had a good amount of uh, bass and body on drums, but by enable the Dirac bass control, something happened on the bass drum. Was lack of body was cancelled, a sort of suck out. Really, really interesting. What I got was uh, more body on the surround speaker but in terms of bass drums body something was not normal so i moved to bass management just with two click from the presets so it's really nice that you can jump between all these three presets and here drums bass body was again there plus i had more separations coming out uh, the drums was coming out more holographic and with a deeper tone compared with direct live so here the winner was uh, bass management something was not uh, working well when i enabled the bass control on the bass drums big difference between direct live and uh, bass management well yes not a night and day difference but uh, more difference in terms of realism and separations and uh, all more three-dimensional kick drums i really really enjoy it next i move to mad max I love this movie also the audio is amazing and here what i found was that with direct live the bass was not so not so much clean let's say like that compared to the bass control and bass management and here was that jumping on bass control i had the best performance comparing the three three settings with much more infrasonic information i mean i i hear something around 20 30 hertz now i'm not sure about the right frequency but I never hear these frequencies in this movie, infrasonic frequencies, just crazy. Look like it's heading something in the infrasonic that I never heard in this movie. And same things I had it also in Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise and Super 8, if you remember this train explosion scenes. Especially on Super 8, here I could feel there is these scenes where the kids' steps playing this movie, they are walking and you hear the steps with body also something that i never experienced before regarding the explosion same things and if you remember these scenes when the camera is moving on the train track and you hear for the first times the train that is coming is just have more infrasonic and more body with bass control and this was just a quick first impressions but we'll go deeper in it because i really want to understand the difference between management and bass control first of all and also give you more information to test it with more blu-ray of course but from the first impressions i have to say that bass control on movie is just killing the infrasonic information that is heading sounds like i was not taking a full advantage from my two per listen d12s before with direct life was fine but now the infrasonic information set i mean this subwoofer can play at 10s without any problem look like now are much more extended more 
clean, more controlled, less plotted, less aggressive, but coming out with more body. Not on, uh, unfortunately, not in everything, because as we saw on Hans Zimmer, for example, I didn't like the drums here. The drums was really without life. So, so it looked that there is something strange on some crossover frequency point because as you saw the bass drums is playing here yeah, around 50 70 something like that so it looked like in these regions with this blu-ray something was wrong and Dirac told me about this and sent me also an article about it that i will let it also in descriptions and if we can read this article saying that usually bass control provides excellent results but sometimes is useful to experiment with alternative for crossover frequencies. And here there is an example of a Dirac Live Bass Control customer that was reporting this suck out in the bass, something that I experienced also with uh, Hans Zimmer, for example. And he shared the calibrations showing the interactions of the front, left, right speaker with uh, the subwoofer with a crossover frequency of 70 Hz. And the results is not satisfactory because of the reported suck outs around 1890. Base control computes the best possible result for the crossover frequency that is assigned by default, but the user has to choose it. So that some experimentation is possible and in the same cases necessary. A relatively fast new computation shows that the following results if the crossovers of the front left right speaker is set at 90 instead. So it looks like I have the same problem that uh, has this another user. So as we can see, I will try to move from 70 to 90 just to correct these cancellations that I have in the front speaker. And now I'm speaking only about the front speaker. Let's take a look of the center after. So let's move from 70 to 90. He will in initializing again the bass control. And as you see now in yellow and pink, the front speaker is much more corrected, more flat. And let's take a look of the center channel. And same things, guys. And it's really strange why is doing this sort of cancellations, maybe not a cancellation, but a weakness, because we can see here up on uh, 60 Hz that actually the center channels in the first measurement without any adjustment, I had a peak because I have some uh, room mods. So is doing this sort of weakness because he's going to cut there. So he's going to measure subwoofer and center channels together of front speaker and it recognizing that in this crossover area point, we have some weakness, right? So let's try to move also the center channels to something around 90. Here we go. Center channels on 90 Hz instead 70. So again, it will initializing again the base control nice i don't have any weakness anymore and it look much much better so okay i like i like it now so i move to base control here he will design again the filter for you let's do again a calculation okay again here is optimizing all the groups all right ready to proceed to filter export all right as you see here, I create three presets and I will take the base control one and save it out there. So replace existing filter with the new one that we create, moving from 70 to 90 Hz. At least front speaker and center channel. The Marens did the reset, I heard it and is ready. Okay, great. Let me jump just quickly to check Hans Zimmer bass drum if I like it or not. And I will come back to you in a second. So guys, I did the test and I can confirm that bass drums is again there, it's much, much better, but I still prefer how it sounds with bass management. Just It just sounds better when I have bass management with more body, more articulations and is more three-dimensional. So I, uh, it's better, it's better with this adjustment from 70 Hz to 90 Hz, but I still prefer it with bass management, when bass management is enabled at least here with Hans Zimmer. So for sure I will try to play a little bit more with the crossover points to see if I can 
reach this bass drum sounds when bass control is enabled. By the way, I have to say that it's nice that with two clicks you have, you can jump between bass management and bass control. I prefer bass control in movies. It's just infrasonic king. It will give you infrasonic informations that are just crazy. But with, uh, because I have a lot of concert. I have a lot of concert because I listen a lot of uh, music with concert. I really love it. And yes, I prefer bass management. So we have to figure out with Dirac the difference between bass management and bass control because it's really interesting. By the way, I'm really impressed with the bass control performance, at least on movies, it's just impressive. And be sure to participate to the QA that we will do, I hope soon, with Dirac Live Engineering. And we did just, uh, we did a live with them already and be sure to be there. So if you have some questions, you can do it. For now is everything. I will play a little bit more with these cures, trying more crossover points to see if I can reach the results that I want, at least with, uh, with bass drum and music as with movies. I hope guys this quick first video, I was really excited about it, was useful for you. If you have any questions, please let me know. For now it's everything. Please don't remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to support my work and see you soon.